All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, happy Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on which day you are in. And uh, I hope you had a an enjoyable long weekend. Um, we are gonna start off today, we're gonna do a little bit of a, a, a mini lab called uh, How Not to Cook a Turkey. Um, and it's all about thermal energy and uh, heat transfer. So uh, first off, talking about energy, we have started off uh, this unit talking about potential energy, kinetic energy, then we got into uh, elastic potential energy, and now we're gonna end the unit with thermal energy. So uh, the lab today will be closely related to that. So first off on the, excuse me, I have my phone going here. So on the uh, screen here, you can see that we have thermal energy. Another way of kind of describing that is to call it heat, and it's delineated by the letter Q. So uh, if you look at the formula there, I have Q equals MC delta T. Uh, the Q stands for heat. Um, M is mass. The C is the specific heat capacity, which is different for all different substances. And then the delta T will be our change in temperature. And so here I have the specific heat for water, which can be written as one calorie per gram degree Celsius or 4,186 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. So this is the unit that we will use down here. So as we get to the, the mini lab, uh, again, it's called how not to cook a turkey. That's just a, a word, like a play on words there for, uh, for this lab. We're not actually gonna cook a turkey. Instead, this is gonna represent our turkey. So it's basically an insulated tube. And if I pull the tube out a little bit, inside the tube, we've got a whole bunch of steel beads. And these steel beads, we have a, a, a thermometer inserted into the back end of it. And so when I push this back on here, I now have this tube insulated. And so we're gonna measure or monitor the temperature inside of the steel balls. And so we're gonna do that using this program right here. So right now you can see the temperature is 22.9 degrees Celsius, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to consistently raise the tube and then drop the steel beads. And when I do that, um, I'm doing work against gravity. So I am going to lift the steel beads up and they are gonna fall. So my potential energy or the potential energy of the steel beads is gonna convert into kinetic energy. And as they fall down and bang into one another, they're gonna convert some of that kinetic energy into thermal energy. And we're gonna measure that by measuring that change in temperature. Okay, so first we need to measure the length of this tube, um, which if I measure that is about, so it turns out it is 82 centimeters or 0.82 meters. Okay, so we're gonna look over here. Uh, and so we have the uh, pre-analysis question. So the initial, initial energy type is going to be our gravitational potential energy. And you're gonna to have to bear with my chicken scratch here. So we're gonna have our potential energy gravitational is going to be equal to M G H. And then our final energy type is going to be our heat. So we're gonna have Q equals M C Delta T. Okay, so uh, we're gonna fill in this information here now in our data. So the specific heat for steel is actually much lower than it is for water. So only 449 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. The mass of the amount of steel in our tube is 491 grams, but that needs to be in kilograms. So that's point. 491 kilograms. Our height or our change in height, I just said was 82 centimeters or 0.82, sorry about this writing, 0.82 meters. And then our change in temperature, we're gonna have to figure out. And so our starting temperature, if I come back over here, is 23.2 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we're gonna record that. 23.2 degrees Celsius. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and run the experiment here. And I forgot to mention one thing. I am gonna do 
50 turns. So we have our, our, our change in height here of 0.82 meters per turn, but we're going to do 50 turns. And so if we do 50 turns, that is going to translate into 41 meters. Okay, so that'll be our distance that uh, we raise it. So now I'm going to come back over here. Uh, so we're at 23.2 degrees Celsius. We'll start there. And then I am going to uh, hit collect and I'm going to start running. So I'm going to stand up to do it because uh, it's going to get in the way here. So I'm grabbing the tube. I'm going to hit collect. And here we go. So one, two, three, four. That's fifteen. Twenty-five. Forty. All right, now I'm going to hit stop. And look at what we've got here. Okay, so we can see that the temperature did go up and it went up to 23.8 degrees. So I come back over here. And so the temperature started at 23.2 and it went to 23.8. That is a change, a delta T of 0.6 degrees Celsius, okay? So now you've got all the information you need to determine what the efficiency of this was. Uh, so we're gonna look at the, uh, the gravitational potential energy to start. Again, that is our MGH. We know our mass, we know gravity, and we know the total height was 41 meters. We know our, or we can determine our increase in uh, heat, which is going to be our MC delta T. We know our mass, again, was 491, uh, 0.491 kilograms. We know our specific heat is 449 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. And we know our delta T, our change in temperature, was 0.6 degrees. So for our efficiency, it's going to be the energy out divided by the energy in take the absolute value of that times 100 and that will give us our efficiency okay so our energy out recall is going to be our chain or our heat our heat energy so our q so another way of saying it is q over our potential energy that we started with times 100. And we'll see what that efficiency turns out to be. So uh, I need you to work this out so that you have it for uh, next class so we can discuss this and then know that um, when you do the practice problems, number one in the practice problems is very close to this question here. Okay, so hope you have a great day and I look forward to seeing you soon. Have a good one.